Okay, I'm going to walk through how I use Claude code to develop my side projects. One of the things I'm working on right now is a login view. So we'll hop out of Claude for just a second and check out the login view. And you'll see here it's pretty basic. We have the email input. Ideally, this should take us to the password view, but instead you can see it, one password would stop. You can see it tries to submit the form. I really like that. I want to tweak the UX here a bit, but let's move on. So let's type in just a bogus password. That didn't work. So we don't get any good error messaging. This button doesn't look particularly good. The UX of the flow between the email and password inputs are just a little off. So I'm going to see if I can have Claude code fix all of that. I've documented all of this in a GitHub issue within the project. You can see there's a ton of information here. So I'm going to hopefully feed this to Claude code and Claude will take this and run with it. So I've got a few custom commands and prompts throughout my code base, and we'll talk through those in just a minute. But first, I'm going to just demonstrate this, and we can take a look at the context while Claude works. So first, we'll start with a slash, and you'll see we've got this project build custom slash command. It's the only one I've got for this project, but it's really all we're going to need. So what we're going to do here is project build. I'm going to go back to GitHub real quick, grab that issue URL, and paste that in. What this is going to do is it's going to trigger a custom slash command that's pre-configured to grab that URL, go to GitHub, use the GitHub CLI that I've already authenticated with and pull the issue details. In this case, it's really just the description, but it would be able to pull comments and other conversation if there was any of that. What Claude's then gonna do is take that information and start designing a solution. First, it's gonna talk to me and make sure it understands the problem that it's trying to solve so it doesn't start trying to solve the wrong thing. Once I tell it that, yes, I think you understand this problem enough, go build it. It's going to then come back to me with ideally a couple different design approaches, but probably closer to just one and say, this is how I want to build it. Claude and I'll then iterate a bit on the design. And once I say, yeah, this design sounds good, go build this out. Claude should then spin up a Git work tree so that it can work in parallel to myself or other agents and then do the work it needs to do commit it in a new branch, and then create a pull request with all of that new code. From there, we'll review the code, and then Claude will take feedback, and we'll iterate on the approach that way. Enough talking about it. Let's just do it. So you'll see here, Claude is doing that first step that I asked it to do, which is task analysis. I'm going to just let it go. So again, like I said, it's going to analyze the GitHub issue. You can see it pulled all this information down. It analyzed the issue. So I'm going to just read this real quick and make sure I agree with its understanding of the requirements. Looking at this, I think Claude understands the problem space pretty well. I'm going to just say, this looks good. Let's move on. So we'll see Claude has proposed a solution. It looks good to me. I can test this later and we'll provide feedback in the pull request step. So at this point, Claude's going to spin up a Git working tree and start developing on its own. So we'll see how that goes. While Claude is spinning, let's talk a little bit about what makes this all work. In a large code base, this might be a little bit difficult to achieve, but in my project, it's pretty small. It's a, not too different from your typical Rails application. It's Rails on the back end, React on the front end, front end written in TypeScript. Nothing crazy here. And because there's a lot of information out on the webs, these models are trained on this information. Claude's pretty good at working in this kind of code base. To the extent that this code base has anything unique about it, this is largely captured by the README, talking about things like how the project is organized, what are the stylistic approaches that I've taken to building this. So Claude has access to a lot of useful information that helps it design a strong solution. I've also got a base prompt that tells Claude how I want you to work with me, kind of what are the things I want you to think about. This is where I dump essentially my design philosophy for writing code, building features, building applications, and really the big important thing that we're talking about today is the build task. So this is the build script. It exists in .claude slash commands as build.md. It's a markdown file, and that's what powers that initial slash command. And you can see the important part of this is the instructions. We break this down into phases. I want Claude to analyze the task. I want Claude to tell me what it thinks I want it to do in its own words and verify that. Just like I might do as an engineer, trying to truly understand requirements with, say, a product manager or even just an engineering manager. I'm going to repeat back to them in my own words what I think they said, just to clarify understanding. Once we're on the same page, I want Claude to give me a design. I want Claude to think about 
what it wants to, how it wants to achieve the goals that we've agreed upon. From there, what Claude is doing right now is implementation. From there, Claude's going to, Claude's going to implement the changes. We've already agreed on a general framework for how this is, implementation is going to go. I don't expect too many surprises. Finally, Claude is going to put up a pull request, just like any other person on my team would do. Claude's going to propose a change set, pass it off to GitHub where I can review it whenever I want. And then I'll go back to Claude and say, you've got comments on your pull request. Go respond to those, address those, incorporate that feedback into your change set and push an update. Just like, again, any other developer would do. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to just shift tab now that Claude is writing code. And this allows Claude to just work freely. I don't necessarily want to micromanage this tool. I want to set it and forget it. All right. So it looks like Claude has done exactly what I wanted it to do. It's completed the implementation. It's given me a quick summary of what it's done. It's even given me a link to the pull request that I can go review at my leisure. So I'm going to go do that now. So let's go hop into to GitHub and let's check this out. So right now, because Claude is using the GitHub CLI authenticated as me, it looks like I've opened this pull request. We've got a summary. We've got a test plan. Before I even hop into the code, I do want to just try this out. We can see that Claude already overlooked updating the button. I think that's okay. You know what? It's not okay. Let's go back to Claude and just tell it that. All right. So while Claude is doing this, let's test out the other things. So we see here that the interaction with the form is a lot smoother though. I can type in my email address. Oh, look at that. We can see Claude's already applied the changes. That looks a lot better. That was quick. I think if I push enter, right, we can see the password form fades in just like I specified. Let's put in a junk password. And look at that. We've got a nice little banner there. I haven't even provided Claude with any design criteria. Claude just was able to come up with a pretty basic, and I would say for now, acceptable implementation of this. This looks better than anything I could have whipped up in the 10 seconds that I let it work. Yeah, this looks good. I think this achieves basically what I wanted it to achieve. Looks like we're updating the branch. That's great. Let's hop into our code, our pull request here. Looks like we got there just in time for that commit. So let's take a look. Two commits. That's right there. Our builds are running. That's great. Let's take a look at the actual code because I will probably have comments. Let's see. CSS looks good. We're even using pre-existing variables. That's nice. Look at Claude figuring that out directly in the component. I don't know if I necessarily care for this comment. That's one thing about Claude code I don't love is it likes to leave a lot of code comments. Sometimes they're pretty good, but a lot of times they're like this, which th this is just not necessary. Love that we're using our pre-existing variables. Oh, that looks good. So taking a look at the login view. I think this is probably unnecessary, but I don't need to complain about it. I think this is fine too. Yep. So right here's a problem I have. Why are we hard coding styles when we have CSS modules right here? And in fact, we even modify CSS modules. I wonder if the button component doesn't support class names. It's been a while since I implemented that, so I'm not sure. Should add support for that. If not. Now is as good a time as any. Let's make this a new class in our CSS module for this component. Update the button component to accept a class name prop and use it. Let's see what else. I don't love that. So as you can see, Claude does a pretty good job, but it's not quite to where I want its style stylistic taste to be, but that's fine. That's what I'm here for. Again, let's not hard code CSS if we can help it. So I've seen that looks fine for the most part. So I like that. All right. I'm going to leave some comments, but I'm not quite ready to approve this. 
So let's go back to Claude. I've just reviewed your pull request, address any comments. And so here we'll let Claude do its work. One of the final things that I'm asking Claude to do in any of these interactions, after we iterate on our GitHub pull request, I want Claude to reflect. Like I mentioned, as we were reviewing the code, Claude doesn't share my taste necessarily. Claude can pick up some of the design approaches that I would normally take based on reviewing other code and saying, okay, this is typically how Jordan has written some of these features. But there's a few small things that Claude overlooks. For example, I am just allergic to CSS in my markup. We have CSS modules for a reason, but I don't ever actually spell that out in my Claude base prompt or in the readme. It's just kind of something that I do in intuitively. And so at the reflect stage, that's one thing that I would expect Claude to come back with and say, here's what I have learned about what you want from me. So we can see here, Claude has addressed all the feedback from the pull request, given me a quick summary about it. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's refresh our pull request. You can see here, again, Claude is commenting as me with an even smaller summary there. We've implemented feedback with a pretty thorough commit description. And we'll see all of the comments are outdated. So let's go back to the file changes and just check them out real quick. Let's see. Oh, we've added class name support to our button. That's awesome. Full width button right there. Yeah, very cool. If we go into our login view, we can see where some of the things that I was concerned with. I don't see any CSS injected into the components. So that's nice. Looking good. Looks like we've updated the package lock because we actually installed class names. So we didn't already have that. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what I would have expected for an engineer incorporating my feedback. So that looks good. Let's just double check. We're still on that branch. This looks good to me. The button still looks nice. It's full width. I don't think I would have expected anything else to come out of this. So I think we're in the clear. Cool. I'm going to merge this and I'll play around with that some more later. Let's tell Claude that they did a good job. The PR has been merged. All right. So now we'll go on to the reflection step that I mentioned earlier and let's see how that goes. Is there anything else you'd like me to help with? Nope. Proceed to the next step. Reflection. Let's reflect on what we learned. Component design. Button component should always support class name. Well, it's a cleaner conditional class learning. I like that. Inline style should be avoided in favor of CSS modules. User experience improvements, pres preserving form state improves usability. Loading indicators are good. Generic error messages provide feedback without exposing implementation details. Code review processes. All right, cool. So yeah. And now it looks like Cloud's going to open up a new PR with documentation changes, which I'll probably approve here in a little bit. 